Welcome to the FloridaDefense.com podcast. With over 30 years of strong defense and over 30 years of even stronger results, with FloridaDefense.com, you'll never believe you can't win. All right, welcome to the Florida Defense podcast, FloridaDefense.com podcast. Uh, We are speaking to Clearwater Assault and Battery Defense Lawyer, um, with Bauer, Kreider, and Perry, uh, Mike Kinney. Um, Mike, we, we talked a little bit about assault and battery um, in the podcast before this one, but uh, we're also going to be talking a little bit more about violent crimes in this one, correct? Sure, yes. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll just kind of turn it over to you. All right, so we, we talked before at the previous podcast about assault and battery charges and how these things get enhanced. Uh, you know, violent crimes in general, the way they get treated in Florida, um, they're very specific. Every, every type of action probably has a specific uh, criminal act uh, outline for it. For instance, you know, the people have mentioned the term drive-by shooting. Um, there's actually a specific charge called uh, shooting from an occupied vehicle. And there's actually another charge shooting into an occupied vehicle. So, and those could be two separate counts. So you could imagine a situation where you have a person driving his car, shooting out of his car into another car. While it's one act, there, there could be two separate uh, charges there. There's obviously also shooting into a house. There's shooting into an occupied dwelling. And those are pretty serious charges. Any kind of shooting charge carries with it a very uh, significant penalty because in the state of Florida, there's been a very strong act to swiftly and um, significantly punish firearms type charges. In Florida, we have the 1020 life statute. And kind of what the 1020 life statute stands for, uh, there are these three aspects. Um, 10 years is supposed to be if you possess a gun during the commission of a felony, it, you get a 10-year minimum mandatory prison sentence. 20 years uh, is the part where that 10 years goes up to 20 if you discharge the firearm. And then life. Life means if you kill a person or cause serious bodily injury in the state of Florida, if you use a firearm to do that, you get 25 years to life. So anytime there's a discharge of a firearm case, there's a twenty uh, potential 20-year minimum mandatory sentence you're looking at. And obviously, depending upon... If anyone was hit, it gets a lot more significant than that. Firearms charges cover the whole gamut. You have firearms charges included in in, um, battery cases and and assault cases. The unique thing is when when a person commits an aggravated assault with a firearm, instead of getting that 10-year minimum mandatory prison sentence, it's only three years. Um, That's just specifically because of the way the statute was written, saying an aggravated assault with a firearm. That's what makes it the charge a felony in of itself, so we're not going to say you carried a firearm during the commission of of this felony. Uh, but everything else, a burglary, a person uh, commits a an armed burglary, for instance, that's actually something that's punishable by life. But if a person um, commits certain charges with a firearm, you you significantly impact the minimum amount of time that these people are facing. And uh, in the state of Florida, it's it's been. You know, according to the statistics, the, the numbers have been very helpful in combating things like recidivism. Uh, I think some of the problems with having these minimum mandatory sentences is you take away a little bit of discretion or a lot of discretion from the judge. Um, a lot of times you have some folks who maybe find themselves for the first time involved in a bad situation. And unfortunately, there's a firearm involved and they automatically, uh, automatically graduate to big boy school. Uh, and they're looking at spending, you know, decades in prison for um, for. Uh, one event in their life that probably if they could do everything, take it back, they would. And there are probably some cases where, you know, where discretion would help. You know, I think sometimes that that the judges should be given that ability to look at who the individual is and um, see where they're going and see if there's any any help in in reforming. The unique thing we have is the um, youthful offender statute when it comes to these violent crime type cases. In any case, uh, even though there's minimum mandatory prison sentences, a person who's under the age of 21, um, that's the one situation where the judge is allowed to depart from the from what the, the man, minimum mandatory sentences might be and, um, and give these, these folks almost like a second shot. So violent crimes covers a, a whole host of things, obviously including homicide. There are certain changes to the homicide statute that impact uh, who the victim might be. Uh, there's certain enhancements depending upon who the victim might be in a homicide. And there's a whole lot of different ways um, that homicides get punished in the state of Florida. And that's something that we're going to talk about during our next podcast. All right. Anything else, uh, Mike? 
All right. All right. Um, you've been listening to the Florida Defense Podcast. We've been speaking to Clearwater Assault and Battery Defense Lawyer, Mike Kenny, and uh, the Bauer Kreider and Perry Law Firm. And uh, check us out on the next podcast. Thank you for listening to the FloridaDefense.com podcast. Our firm has over 130 years of combined legal defense experience. Strong defense, stronger results. Consultations are free. Visit FloridaDefense.com today.